Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux and the weekly news roundup. This is the privacy edition and we had three little articles on smart tech that we're going to throw to the end of this. I did not build a title for it um, uh, just because there were three of them and hey, why not? It's been a crazy week. I know it's been a crazy week, guys. I promise the only thing relating to elections is how it relates to tech and privacy. We have a couple privacy ones here. We have a couple business ones in the other sections. But other than that, we're not talking about candidates or politics or who's winning or who's losing or anything else because if y'all like me you're sick of hearing about it but anyway let's dive on in first one and by the way we're going to do the election stuff first uh the first election thing michigan votes to require warrants for police to seize and search digital devices like i mean what's going on up there in michigan half of what y'all are doing is insane and half of what y'all doing is like amazing this is qualifies under the amazing. So over there in Michigan, if if uh, you're stopped by or something, hey man, you want to search through your phone? Co sorry man, let me see your warrant. So this will now require that a warrant is uh, is acquired before police search search and seize digital devices, which I believe this uh, will also apply to if you're stopped along the road, which is. Certainly something that's important near the border. Remember, anywhere like, it was at 100 or 150 miles from the border, Border Patrol can stop you. So now this will even prevent the Border Patrol from grabbing information uh, from you without having a warrant. That's basically what this is going to do. Um, so the proposal amends the Michigan Constitution and bring the existing protections from unlawful and unreasonable searches of homes, documents, and other personal possessions up to date, which includes electronic data and communications on people's devices. About time, hopefully, that this will start trickle into other states as well, because this is a really good thing. Very good. Congratulations, citizens of Michigan. Hopefully, you have started something good. Uh, Portland, Maine, not Portland Riot, Portland, Maine has voted to ban facial recognition. Uh, they also have like $15 minimum wage now, and there were like five or six interesting uh, things they did. And this was the this is the one that was, relates to the topic of this show. They have voted to ban all facial recognition. Private citizens are entitled to a minimum of $1,000 in fines if they are subject to facial recognition scan by the police. Now, I'm not sure what the role is with private business because, of course, Walmart utilizes facial recognition. Lowe's does. Home Depot does. Pretty much all of your big stores utilize facial recognition in one way, shape, or form. And so, in this, I it, I didn't see how this would relate to private businesses, but of the police use any form of facial recognition, you are entitled to a minimum of $1,000 in civil fees. Once again, anytime we are banning facial recognition, that is a good thing. So congratulations. Um, y'all guys down there in Mississippi though, y'all are screwed in the head. I don't know what it is like, hey, Portland, Maine's doing fine, Michigan's doing fine. Mississippi, have y'all lost your mind? You guys want to help the city fight the crime by allowing the police to tap into your surveillance cameras, which could be Ring, it could be any of the surveillance cameras, but what they're doing is they basically have this program called, they have two of them, two companies, Pylum and Fusus. And uh, I tried to look up information, particularly on Fusus. I could not find really any information. So basically, I believe these programs have the APIs that can go into nearly every one of these commercially available cameras and tie into those cameras. That's what I think is going on here. And then if you agree and sign a piece of paper, you agree to let them do it anytime they want, basically. Quote, unquote, whenever there's a crime they need to investigate. End quote. But I couldn't tell, is this some application you have to install or add, or is it just a background API, which honestly makes more sense to be a background API. So y'all guys down there in Mississippi, um, you guys are, are kicking open the, the bad side of things. Uh, a lot of the people commenting in these articles, I agree with them. You know, I've had, I don't, I, my security cameras are not on all the time, at least not all of them, uh, I should say, but at the time I was running the security cameras and I did have them on, if a police officer knocked on my door and said, we noticed you have a security camera, a crime was committed out here uh, in the neighborhood, could we preview your, your footage? I'd be like, yeah, sure, come on in. Let's go ahead and have a look at the footage. That's no big deal. I'd get them a copies of whatever they want. But as far as them just having the ability to tap into it whenever they want, eh, 
Not really, especially since these things catch when we're coming, when we're going, all these types of things. And who knows, I wasn't particularly smart back then either, but at least I was smart enough to not have like a nest or something insane like that. I believe that is all of the election news. Uh, on to the other privacy news. What's up? Excuse me. WhatsApp is now letting you uh, post messages that will disappear after seven days. Disappear. We all know if you delete something off of a Facebook property, it's just gone forever, right? Uh, no, they tag it so it's invisible. They still have access to that information. And the question is, is WhatsApp going to be doing the same thing? Obviously, we have found evidence in cases where Snapchat is supposed to have invisible disappearing stuff. Snapchat itself is indeed supposed to be deleting messages. We found evidence that it's not. Sure, you can't see it anymore, but just because you can't see it don't mean it ain't there. It's like the teenager trying to hide his nasty picture collection by putting it in a hidden folder and the parents too incompetent to know how to unhide a folder, okay? Uh, really, that's, that's really what, what we're talking about. But anyway, they are saying that uh, with over a 100 billion messages sent per day, because people apparently have nothing better to do with their life, now they're putting in the feature to allow you to auto-delete messages. Now, if you enable the features, it does not go back and delete older messages. It just deletes messages that are seven days old based on the time when you turn it on. I'm still going to guess. If I had my guess, I'm still going to guess that, yeah, they're, they're still keeping those messages. You just can't really see them. That's really the difference. All right, uh, Comcast is talking with Walmart about co-developing and distributing smart TVs. This feels me full of hatred and terror. Um, Walmart and Comcast. You want to put Walmart and Comcast microphones, possibly cameras, internet connections into your home? You need a checkup from the neck up. I'm telling you, that's insane. And, uh, of course, we also have to remember that Walmart um, Walmart works close with Microsoft. Now, it says here it is a third-party software, which could be Microsoft stuff. But I thought the third-party, let's see, sources say televisions would likely be manufactured by a third-party and carry Walmart branding, obviously. So some third-party, some, you know, some small factory in China employing, you know, nine-year-olds are going to be putting together your TVs and they'll slap a Walmart logo on it with amazing software from Comcast that's going to be doing nothing more than collecting and harvesting all of your data. And so, yeah, guys, this is exciting. We don't want to do any of that. So just keep that up with that. All right, and on our final one on privacy, Google is bringing its own VPN to desktops and phones with a $9.99 Google One subscription. So you're paying Google to harvest your data. Let me give you guys a reminder crash course in VPNs. Now, I have a couple extra videos on this. One of those is called Truth and Lies in VPNs. I believe that's the name of the video. It's an old one. It probably needs to be redone, recut. Uh, the information is still accurate. In fact, it's more relevant now because all these people are trying to say, we need a VPN to protect ourselves. But we're forgetting the fundamental principle. When we connect to a VPN, you are giving that company access to everything. This is where Facebook had the VPN. People had a big deal about it. And so they just kind of turned it into a um, never change anything, just change the branding and said, hey, now it's just a, a research tool that will pay you to use it because they can see everything. If you're paying Google to use Google One subscription services, you are paying Google to see everything every single connection on your device period every website everything every connection every app everything do not use this type of vpn don't use one from facebook you're, you're going to you want to use one if you need one express vpn private internet access these are good vpns that have been tested i know uh, for example private internet access has been tested in court i think express vpn did but i'm not sure um, the other thing is build your own VPN. Now you can build it out on a cloud server. I will do a video on that sometime soon. I also though just did a video. It was the worst timing ever because it was like election day or something. I did a video on how to build your own personal VPN on a Raspberry Pi and connect that to Pi Hole. Was it election day? I think it was. It was around there. 
And so it got like no views because everyone's watching their TV on something else. But if you are interested in that, I do have a recent video and there's a whole tutorial on it on the website as well. And I did recognize this morning, I forgot to put the video link in the tutorial online. It is now on the website. So you can go ahead and have a look at that. That's a uh, VPN running on Pi with the DNS being managed by Pi Hole. Excellent, excellent, excellent choice for VPN and it all runs on my system. So that's the type of VPN you want to use. Don't just assume I'm connected to a VPN, therefore I'm safe. Because the back door, the part nobody's talking about is a VPN will allow that company to see anything and everything you're doing. The question is, are they looking at it? Google has an incentive to look at, store, collect, harvest, and analyze your data. A company like Private Internet Access, ExpressVPN, does not. All right, they do not. And so that is what we want to keep in mind with VPNs. They are not the magic bullet of privacy. In fact, more often than not, I do not necessarily recommend using a VPN if you're sitting in your home office for anything and everything. You want to use it to break out of geo restrictions, to connect and secure your privacy. Uh, when you are on an open public Wi-Fi network, that is very important. And the last one is to access your network shares, which my recent video will show you how to access your network shares and secure your internet connection on an open database. But as far as Google's VPN, not a service you're going to want to use because you're basically giving Google every bit of your data and you don't want to do that. All right, I have three stories here in the uh, smart tech news. Walmart scraps plans to have robots scanning shelves. So this uh, little nebulous looking robot over here is running around scanning the shelves. And uh, they said part of it was the pandemic. Uh, part of that was, was that reason, just cutting things back. But what they found is that employees could actually do the job actually more efficiently than the robots. So yay for you guys. This is a case where the employees actually took over the place of the robot. Very good. Very awesome. Now that the, uh, the, robots, uh, the robots lost their jobs to the people. Go figure. Um, so there was a part of it that... The, uh, the guy, at, uh, the executive at Walmart kind of said, you know, people actually were not comfortable walking around the store with robots. And I agree with that. I see one of these robots in, in stores. I'm like, I can't go the other way. I don't want to mess around near these stupid things. Um, and that's the thing, you know, we need to keep our jobs, not give them to robots, you know? So that's that. Um, next in smart tech, LG rolls out a battery powered wearable air purifier. So uh, this is uh, something I think we talked about the, the idea behind this earlier, but it, they go into all this kind of stuff. It's rolling out in like um, a couple of the Asian countries, but it does actually have the notice at the very bottom that uh, LG doesn't say anything about air expel, which could be uh, why there's no mention of COVID in the release. Basically, uh, CDC recommends against using masks with exhalation vents to prevent coronavirus spread. So basically, it's a digital smart mask for the sheeple who just think throwing on a mask saves the whole world from coronavirus, even though this one possibly makes it worse, according to the Centers for Disease Control. Very interesting device we have going on here. That's for sure. And our last story in smart tech, smart devices could use AI to tell where your voice is coming from. This is kind of part of the plan to wake up these smart devices without... Uh, without having a wake word. So the device is going to figure out where it is and which one you're talking to because I always look at my smart speaker when I'm telling it to, hey Alexa, order unicorn meat, confirm. Okay. But they have going through this article is very interesting because they're like, there's going to be a time when we have all this smart technology around us. You know? So here's a picture of this. What moron is going to have this smart smart tech? Let answer me this question. Do you have this much smart tech? Do you have, do you entire, do you aspire to have this much smart tech? So here's the guy. It's an overhead view of a guy. He's in the green in the middle. Hello device. What time it is? It's 1142. Like he says, what time is it? And from every corner of his room, it screams 1142. This is a horror film, people. This is not smart tech. This is a horror film. This is the machines are coming to get us. This is what it is. 
So here he is. He's going in here and he must be in one of these pod rooms, right? He's in one of these pod studio efficiencies. Do you notice this? This is 2030. I own nothing and I couldn't be happier. See, he's got his bed, his smartphone, his chair, his computer, his TV, his exercise equipment, and his speakers, his game console. This is a pod. This is a pod person. Only a pod person is stupid enough to have this much crap. You got your laptop, you got your smart speaker, you got your smart speaker over here, you got a game console, your smart TV over here, your smart exercise equipment, your smartphone. The only thing you have is this dumb idiot in the middle of the room. This is insane. So yeah, um, definitely interesting. But the idea here is to figure out which one you're closest to so the closest one will respond to you and not get all caught up in the middle. I'm telling you people, I'm telling you, I, I feel bad for the human race. I feel bad for the human race. <laughs> all right, well, if you like this video and would like to help support us, we do have a variety of affiliate links. Today we are featuring uh, Express VPN, talking about VPNs today. Uh, VPN, uh, as I said earlier, a VPN is good if you need to break out of geo restriction. If you are traveling a lot and use public Wi Fi's, a VPN is something you absolutely want to have. It's not going to be the end all of privacy. But if you are a person that does need a VPN, ExpressVPN is an excellent choice. It is considered one of the better VPNs right now. TLM.li forward slash EV. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.